Today we're in Yellowstone National Park exploring some of the hydrothermal features found along Yellowstone Lake. Join me at West Thumb Geyser Basin. This area, which includes the Potts Hot Spring Basin to the north, is the largest geyser basin along the Yellowstone Lake shoreline. The One Mile Loop Trail here is located along the westernmost edge of Lake Yellowstone, which is aptly named after the thumb shape of the section of this lake. Yellowstone Lake is the largest lake above 8,000 feet elevation in North America. The Hayden Expedition of 1871, originally named Thumb Paint Pots, Mud Pots, because of their varied look. in that their water is more acidic and it can actually dissolve the surrounding rock into clay. Also, mud pots can vary with precipitation and groundwater levels. Sometimes they just look like muddy water. The figure eight shaped boardwalk takes you alongside dozens of pools, geysers, and paint pots, as well as boiling mud pots. Now, many of which are nameless. However, some named highlights include the seismograph pool, bluebell pool, blue funnel spring, abyss pool, and the perforated pool here, which is named for the large quantity of vents visible under the surface. One of the deeper hot springs in Yellowstone National Park, Abyss Pool descends down 53 feet, and it can vary in colors from turquoise blue to emerald green to numerous shades of brown. Named for their appearance, both the Collapsing Spring and Ledge Spring have erupted here in Yellowstone. In early 2010, both overflowed and receded several times. The topography of this area is constantly evolving. Temperature changes have affected pool colors, earthquakes have shifted rock formations, and new geysers continue to pop up, like the footprint geyser, which erupted 15 feet high in 2002 for the first time. Now, two decades later, we're still waiting for its encore appearance. Another recent change occurred in 1991 when the Black Pool, seen here, 
had an extreme rise in temperature due to an energy surf, and this caused the dark green and black colors here to transform into the blue we see today as the thermolithic bacteria was killed by boiling eruptions. It should go without saying, but please always stay on the designated boardwalks and trails here for your personal safety and to protect the natural features. Back in 1893, a park employee attempted to impress his friends by stepping near the thumb geyser, and he plunged through the surface into boiling water. Now, while he did survive the old deal, he was badly burned, and unfortunately, other park visitors have suffered the same or worse fates by not staying on the path. So please don't go off this boardwalk. Yellowstone Lake really does resemble a human hand, and West Thumb is indeed where that thumb would be. Now this lake covers over 131 square miles, and the maximum depth is over 410 feet deep. Stories tell of cooking on the hook here where anglers would catch a trout, then swing their pole over fishing cone to cook the fish without taking it off the line. Obviously fishing is no longer allowed from fishing cone, but it's a fascinating story. Along with fishing cone, there are multiple spots lakeside you'll want to stop to check out here. Bluebell Pool is often referred to simply as the Blue Pool. It's not hard to see why with its striking blue color. Once you've walked the West Thumb Trail, take the short detour over to the Potts Hot Spring Basin. Just a mile and a half north of West Thumb Geyser Basin Trail is a small pullout along the Grand Loop Road. Here you'll find the overlook spot for Potts Hot Spring Basin, which offers views of over 40 geysers and pools backdropped by the crystal blue waters of Yellowstone Lake. Up until 1970, there was a boardwalk that allowed visitors to view these features up close, and the main road even skirted the basin along the shoreline. But for our safety and for the preservation of the area, the road was rerouted to what we see today, and the boardwalk was removed, so there's just this small viewing area.
Thanks so much for joining me today in Yellowstone National Park. And for more information on these spots, make sure to see my full West Thumb Geyser Basin blog post at flyingdonmarie.com. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and subscribe. And until next time, I hope you find adventure and encouragement wherever you go. Bye.